it's not to say that our job is to tell everyone all the wrong and, and troubling things in our life, but I think when you allow to uh, let your brokenness you know, kind of be communicated, then it shows people that God can do something through it. And when he does do something through it, it's not because of you, it's because of him. Yeah. But if we're over here acting like, oh, well, we never have problems, we never have any issues, then it doesn't even allow God to be the savior that we claim that he is. What is up, everyone? We are back with another episode of Shaping the Culture. Now, like, let's just get to it. The whole sa secular, sacred divide. There is no distinction in, in the scriptures. <laughs> task was just keep it on brand with the tour is making a room right and as christians there's always a struggle as far as like making a room for newer people or people that have stepped away temporarily right so in your vision how do you envision us being successful or efficient as much as possible in the individual sense and then the communal sense to be able to make more room for people so yeah thank you i'll start with that one I think one easy thing that we can all do, which I think we tried touching on today, is just to be, with wisdom, to be more honest about the current state of affairs. You know what I'm saying? And by that I mean, like, I think, at least in popular culture, I don't want to speak for everybody, there's like a sense that um, there is a disassociation between what goes on in Christian culture and what actually goes on in reality. Because, <laughs> Because a lot of times, like, you know, this is like the, this is the kind of, uh, this is the heightened version of it, but like, you'll talk to someone in the South, and they'll ask them how you're doing, they'll say, bless them highly favored, even though their whole life is falling apart, you know? And it's not to say that our job is to tell everyone all the wrong and, and troubling things in our life, but I think when you allow to uh, let your brokenness, you know, kind of be communicated, then it shows people that God can do something through it. And when he does do something through it, it's not because of you, it's because of him. Yeah. But if we're over here acting like, oh, well, we never have problems, we never have any issues, then it doesn't even allow God to be the savior that we claim that he is. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think the, we, we claim God as a savior in terms of our salvation, but sometimes we have to allow him to be Lord and savior of our lives, not only through the way in which we follow his instruction, but also allowing him to make something beautiful out of the mess in our lives. So, so. I would also add to that, um, making room by not expecting perfection, but progression in people's yes. lives. Yes. Because I think as a church, as a body, and not like pointing fingers in any particular direction or church or anything like that, but as a body, <laughs> I think we don't do as great of a job in helping people realize that the church exists for people who are actually progressing, not for people who are trying to attain the state of perfection. But because we put so much pressure on people to be perfect, to be sinless, to be walking upright, to be, you know, like exemplifying this relationship with Christ that even biblically doesn't even make sense. It's not an accurate depiction of what our journey of faith should look like. We actually discourage and deter people from even trying rather than inviting them into the space where they're growing and feeling like there is room at the table for them. Yeah. So I think just not putting this unrealistic pressure of we gotta get it together before we come to the Lord. We gotta get it together, we gotta be right, we gotta be sinless. It's like, no, he actually accepts us as we are. He doesn't leave us there, but he accepts us as we are. And I think just being mindful um, as believers, as a community, as a body of how are we communicating and making room in this space for people who are just trying to take one step at a time. And yes, in that process, they'll probably fail once, twice, three times, four times, but are they getting back up? Yeah. And are they willing to try it again? And are they able to see the grace and mercy of God in that process as they are growing, as they are walking? But if we put too much pressure for people to just show up and have it all together, they'll never feel like there is any room for them in this space. Mm -hmm. And I think with the way culture is and with the way our day and time and where we're at right now, people are not, tr people can sense. 
sense what's authentic and what's not. They don't trust, they don't trust us, they really don't, right? And so it's like, man, we, we portray this image of perfection, of mature Christianity looking just perfect and holy and sinless, and the reality is that we still struggle. Yeah. And while we're on this side of eternity, the process of sanctification is ongoing, which means we're not fully complete, we're not fully whole, perfect, so that means there's gonna be moments where we fall and we make mistakes and we don't do a great job perhaps of maybe exemplifying the grace and heart of Christ in the way that we should at all times, but that is okay. There is room in that space for us to keep going. I think we just need to be authentic with that message and just make room for people that are willing to progress and not for people that are just looking to just be perfect. So, yeah, that's really good. Can I say one more thing to that? Um, <laughs> the older I get, the more I'm realizing that, you know how they say, the more you know, the more you realize how much you don't know. And I've been chewing on this the last couple of weeks, like the life of Job and Job's friends. Um, when you kind of study some of their conclusions about why Job was suffering the way he was suffering, they're, they're never theologically incorrect. They don't say anything about Job, about sin, about God that's incorrect. But they were so off and so wrong, and that's because they placed the responsibility on themselves to rationalize for Job why he was experiencing what he was experiencing. And so I have learned the way I make room for people is, 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 is by not playing God. Lead with curiosity. Lead with question. And don't always go to a Bible verse. Maybe what that person needs is for you to listen. Right. To weep with those who are weeping. Right. To just let them know that no matter where they are, you're committed to their journey. Job's friends didn't know how long the pain would last. Job's friends didn't know what God was up to, though they acted like they did. And at the end, they were severely rebuked by God. Right. And for me, reading that story, I've just learned, man, I, I'm going to be judged for the words I say. I'm going to be judged for the tweets or the whatever, X, whatever it is now. <laughs> Friends, that's right. Uh, for every Instagram, whatever it is, God's going to hold me accountable. And I don't want to put words in his mouth that are not of his. And so one of the ways I'm trying to make room for people is by making room for God and letting God be God.